next news is out of East London. A woman shouts shame on you in homophobic rant at Pride March. Um, there was a woman who was filmed wearing while well, she was wearing a niqab. And there was a man that was wrapped in a rainbow flag. And she runs up to him and she's shouting at him, shame on you, you despicable people. Um, she was also heard shouting a line from Alan Partridge, God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Um, despite the shocking abuse, the victim replied, we still love you. You will not shame me. Um, and there was somebody in a yellow vest that had to separate the, the two of them because she was coming after the guy. Um, the police are now investigating the suspect, this as a suspected hate crime. Uh, it happened Saturday during the Waltham Forest Pride in Ho Street, Waltham Stow. I'm going to, sh should I show the video? Yeah, I think you should play the video. Okay, so let, let Anna know that this uh, this one had a video. I, she should have sent me a, a video for this one so that I could have it ready beforehand. But okay. not, right now I don't have it ready. So let me just open the video properly for everybody just uh, be patient with me okay let's see and this She's very passionate, hey? Let me go back to... Okay. Do you have, have you seen it? Have you seen the video? I have seen the video. Mm. Um, yeah, that was pretty aggressive. Like, I don't understand. This woman is in... It's, this is in London, right? Yes. You would think by now she would have seen it enough. Like, she seems like it's the first time that she saw a gay rights activist in her life. Like, you think living in London... By this, by now, she would have been like, "Oh yeah, those those dirty, gay people," and just rolling her eyes. Like the way she's reacting, it seems like this is the first time she saw <laughs> she's seen a gay rights activist. This is a very aggressive reaction. Holy shit! She, very aggressive. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, she's thank you. Thanks to her for reminding us why we need gay rights activism. I appreciate her service. And I appreciate her for showing how homophobic Islam is and how big of a problem homophobia in Islam is. By the way, this, uh, again, this is, um, I understand that people say, oh, this is anecdotal evidence, but go look at the data. Don't just believe, don't look at this, this woman. Uh, this is anecdotal, but if you go look at the data, she does represent the majority. Uh, of not just Muslims, by the way, in Islamic country, because a lot of people are like, yeah, 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 Islam, Muslims in Islamic countries, like if you look at Pakistan, Egypt, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, you can look at Muslims, what they think about uh, gay people there, and the statistics is absolutely horrific, right? Like the people that, know how many people think that gay people should be killed, how many people think they should be outlawed. Um, it's a vast majority when it comes to outlawing, when you think that people think that being gay is wrong. But you're like, obvious, but not the Muslims in the UK, right? No, but if you look at Muslims in the UK, around half of the Muslims in the UK, half of them think that it should be illegal to be, to be gay. Half of the Muslims, not in Islamic countries, okay? I'm talking about the Muslims that are already in the United Kingdom, okay? And this is why it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of people in the UK are afraid about the um, rise of Islam in the UK. Because people are like, well, it's never going to become majority Muslim, but it doesn't have to be majority Muslim. If you get to a situation where it's, I don't know, if, if you ever get to 10%, 15%, 20%, right? It's just 10%. That's a huge voting block. And you're talking about a group of people that believe that homosexuality needs to be legal. 
the, these people these people are going to have their own favorite politicians and they they are very good at voting as a block for whoever you know rather than be like half of them vote for this guy half of them for that guy no 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 they're going to bring to the power the people that they need to bring to power and it's going to change the country's politics which is a shame for england for the united kingdom as a country that is the mother of enlightenment values the united kingdom right a lot of people point out Voltaire was from France, but Voltaire was exiled from France to, and he, uh, to United Kingdom. So, but a, con a country where, I mean, okay, France and f the parents of Enlightenment movement are France and uh, United Kingdom, okay? But the countries that inspired, inspired all these human rights, all these, um, um, you know, freedom and equality and all these things that enjoy are now being threatened from within it's just so sad it's so sad and people people are not taking it seriously and people who are taking it seriously are seen as hateful seen as bigots what do you guys think do you guys, yeah yeah <laughs> sure, what are you? all right i'm gonna read the top comments uh top comments saying shameless question mark uh, honey, I think two adult, uh, two adult consensual men sleeping together is a lot better than a grown man screwing a nine-year-old. Yeah. By the way, I don't think a lot of people think it's not fair game to bring up Aisha and Muhammad raping a nine-year-old girl every time. I think it's definitely fair game. Bring it up as much as you want. In fact, bring it up more often. It's, it's completely hypocritical for religion to even pretend to be a source of moral values when their prophet raped a nine-year-old so people think it's a low-hanging fruit don't bring it up or else you can't have a conversation no if you feel like bringing it up it's completely fair bring it up bring it up and more people need to know that it happened that they that's what they that's canonized in islam and every time well, somebody, uh, yeah go ahead. Uh, i mean uh, thank you for that like i always bring up I mean, Muhammad raping Aisha and all, and people, uh, yeah, label me as hateful. And someone even said, like, that was like years ago. That was not even rape back then, and that was normal back then. Like, what? I'm, I'm always like, what? Okay, no, no, no. Yeah, tell them. Uh, yeah, it was normal back then. Rape was normal no, back I then. I mean, it was, but I mean, still. No, not How can still. You justify that. Yeah, I mean, okay, just tell them that. Okay, yes, yeah, slavery was also normal back then. Okay. Yeah, I will say that. Like, so, just because it was normal at time doesn't mean that's good. Yeah, doesn't mean it's good. And yeah, and the point, the point when they say like what well, was normal back then, tell them like yeah, exactly. And that's why your your religion needs to die because things, uh, horrific things that were normal back then and are not normal now, you're trying to bring it from the past to now. We have we're trying to cure society from diseases that were normal back then. You know what, actually compare it to disease. There are a lot of diseases that were normal back then and we get rid of them because of vaccination. But just because they were normal back then, we're not bringing back the disease. Are we bringing back those diseases because they were normal back then? No. So we're, we don't want to bring, we don't want to encourage Islam either because in, Islam teaches, encourages, because the whole point of Islam is following the Quran and the way of Muhammad's way of life. And Muhammad's way of life includes raping nine-year-olds. That's in the religion. And anybody that denies that, anybody that can't, tells you that, oh no, that's not true, that's not in Islam, call their bullshit out because it's, it's mentioned many times in Sahih Bukhari and other, other authentic, so-called authentic sources of the Hadith. But anyway, we don't, with regards to whether it happens or it didn't happen, it doesn't matter. What matters is that it's canonized in Islam. When it goes to what Muhammad did and what he said, we have no fucking idea how much of this is historic. It's irrelevant. What matters is that according to Islam, they happened. Okay? And when people say it didn't happen, that means they're throwing out one of the most authentic sources of Hadith. Okay? And when you throw out that, they're basically throwing out 90, more than 90% source of their laws and practices, okay? Four of the five pillars of Islam is meaningless without their hadith, okay? So if they want to, if somebody says like, yeah, okay, the hadith is wrong, okay, that's great. Because if you say the hadith is wrong, you, most of your Islam is gone. Most of your Islam is irrelevant. 
because you just threw away, threw away, you know, for for and ninety percent of Islam. Ninety percent. Again, I know it's not a ninety percent um, of the, you know, pillars of Islam. But if you look, read the Quran itself. It has very little laws and practices in it. It has some like inheritance laws and stuff, but most of law, most of the practices and most of the laws, uh, Sharia comes from Hadith, and that's where you also get the age of Aisha. By the way, the Quran itself. The, not, if you if you like if you're a Quranist, by the way, the Quranists are the people that don't believe in the Hadith and only believe in the Quran, and they are such a fringe group. Most Muslims believe in the Hadith, but even if you want to be so, you know. Um, charitable and just be like okay fine the Quran is just let's just look at the Quran and forget that it is the Quran itself talks about wives that you're divorcing in puts it into two groups the ones that have gone through puberty and the ones that haven't the, go the ones that have had their um, you know um, you know have bled and haven't bled right so uh, they have the ones that haven't had their periods yet and the ones that have right so when you're talking about wives that haven't had their periods yet in the Quran you're referring to child wives so the Quran itself without the hadith makes it clear that it was normal for them under Islam to have women uh, to have wives that are children okay just to make that clear like I, is, by the way a lot of in, some people might say like Oh, this is too wrong, doesn't make it right. Like some people are like, yeah, I'm not saying gay, being gay is wrong, but this is not a good counter because they're pointing out something is wrong. And instead of saying why they are wrong, you're pointing to something else that is wrong. And this is what about is them, right? No, I'm not. This is not a, when bringing up Aisha's age is not a response to them calling out, uh, calling out homosexuality as a sin and discussing bringing up Aisha's age is a response to people claiming Islam is a source of morality. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.